Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Transfer Your Skills, which is part of our Get That Job webinar series here at the Champaign Public Library. My name is Jordan Neal, and I am the career librarian here at the library, so thank you all for joining us. Uh, for the latest library news and updates, please visit our website, champagne.org, or you could follow us on social media. You can email us at librarian at champagne.org, or you can just chat, chat with us if you have any questions. Uh, the library is open, um, and we are still offering our curbside services, so please, again, visit our website or just give us a call for more information. Moving on to a couple of Zoom features available to you that might help during this webinar. There are some buttons or icons at the bottom of your Zoom screen, depending on your device. On the far left, you have the options that control your sound or your speaker. Moving to the right and within the center of the window includes a chat and raised hand option. You can use these options to ask us questions or share any comments. Um, we invite you to type your question into the chat or raise your hand and we can unmute you if you prefer to speak and ask your questions. Um, I would like to also remind everyone that our webinars are recorded. Finally, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Kevin Martledge of Next Year Advisors, who is here to discuss uh, transferable skills with us. Um, we have Kevin's entire bio available on our website, but he has graciously shared his experience and insights uh, with us in previous webinars, and I thank uh, him for joining us again today. So with that, Kevin, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Jordan, and appreciate everybody joining us today, and uh, hopefully you can see my PowerPoint presentation. So uh, it's a pleasure being here. I always enjoy doing these uh, webinars with the, uh, with the Champaign Public Library. I appreciate you being here. So um, my name is Kevin Martledge, and I'm president of a consulting firm I own called Next Year Advisors. And we're going to talk today about how you can intentionally um, develop your career path um, by identifying and using your transferable skills. Um, and so as Jordan mentioned, I've done a couple of webinars, and so there will be some things that I referenced today that you may go back and uh, check out some of those other webinars to get some additional information. But with that, we'll just jump right into it. Um, so. Um, so basically, I think before we get started, it's important to kind of understand how I approach kind of coaching and career development with individuals. And, and so my, my whole purpose is to enhance performance, teamwork, and careers through intentional conversations and solutions. And, and I approach that by doing a couple different things. I think it's very important for you as an individual um, to be very aware of kind of your personal interests, your styles, um, and anything along those lines to look internally to help you identify rewarding career and different opportunities, different work activities you might do and leadership enhancements um, that can lead to a more engaging and intentional career. Um, and I always give the story about, you know, if I would have done that maybe 25, 30 years ago when I first got out of high school and college, um, really looking into what my personal interests were and what some of those skills maybe I had that developed. Um, you know, perhaps my career path would have been a little bit different um, and I wouldn't be sitting here with you today saying, hey, now after 25 years of, of working, I'm, I'm finally doing something that I find extremely engaging and something that's uh, really rewarding in terms of my career. Um, and I've had a lot of things throughout my career that are, are certainly rewarding, a lot of great people I worked with, but is there a way that I could have intentionally kind of driven that career um, through understanding my personal interest in, in some different things that I have. So that's kind of the background about me um, and my company and how I approach these things. And, and so I'm going into this um, kind of saying, you need to understand you before becoming truly intentional about your career. And there's a lot of things that I talk about with some of my clients and people that have been on the webinars. And there's, there's things I call the, the four career W's. And and that's really helping you understand who you are as an individual, what do you value, what do you like to do, and which environments allow you to be the most productive. Um, and so I think, you know, no matter what part of your career you're in, whether you're getting that first job, whether you're making a career change, maybe you're, you're wanting to just figure out something else, um, these are four things that are very important for you to understand about yourself as you're looking to, to see what that next step in your career might be. Um, and then what we're going to be focusing on today is some of my best skills are. And so once you know those four things about yourself, you start to identify, okay, what are these things called transferable skills, which we'll get into here in just a second. And what are those things I'm really good at 
that I can transition into a or use as, as a career and a, and a natural progression in my career. <clears throat> so we're going to go through some, some ideas of how you identify those today. Um, and then hopefully at the end, we're going to start talking about what occupations or opportunities align with those items um, to help you intentionally advance um, those different into those different career categories. <clears throat> so as we said, regardless of where you are in your career journey, um, I feel really strongly that transferable skills are extremely important to identify and understand. And so whether you're just starting out on this on this uh, career path as your first job, you're looking to do something different or you're looking for that new job, um, identifying your transferable skills are extremely important um, for you to do and will help you navigate through those things, um, not only using your transferable skills, but also your experiences and ultimately to help you achieve your career goals and even your personal goals in some, in some instances. So the goals for today is we're gonna discuss the importance of self-awareness and career development very briefly. We're gonna understand what transferable skills are. We're gonna help you identify some of those transferable skills. And we're gonna show you how understanding your skills can be helpful in your overall career journey, while also providing you some additional resources for intentional career discovery and development. So a lot to cover today, so we'll jump right into it. And like I said, some of these things will be referenced in some other webinars we've done with the, the Champlain Public Library, uh, but I will certainly give you enough information today during this webinar to so it all makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so self-awareness. So we talk about the, the four career W's specifically, uh, the who, why, what, and where. Um, and so the best thing you can do when you start to identify the, the who or how I would describe myself is to come up with you know, these, what I call personal impact statements. Um, and so if I were to ask you, how would you describe yourself, both personally and in the work setting, you know, what would that be? What are some of those descriptive words that you would use and, and what's important to you um, in terms of how you would describe yourself? Um, so we'd start with that and we have some webinars that, that explain how to do that. Then you start talking about what you value. So what do you value in a job? You know, what is it that gets you um, up every morning going to that job? What is it that keeps you engaged? What is it that's very important to you um, as you're approaching that job and advancing throughout your career? What are those things that really truly you value? <clears throat> and then what would you do? What would you enjoy spending your work time doing? What do I like to do? You know, um, ideally, you know, we all have this job um, that we love getting up and doing every day and we go in there and we're engaged, but we're also doing things that we really like to do. Um, and so, you know, being able to sit down and really outline what some of those things are would not only help you as you advance and look for that first job, you know, what are some things that allow you to do that, um, but making that career change or even advancing to like that next job um, within your current position, you know, what is it about your job now that you really like or what is it about your personal life that you really like and can you transition that intentionally into a, into a, a career? And then I would like to work in, which environment allows me to be the most productive? And so this is everything from, um, you know, what kind of supervisor is gonna, am I going to find the most engaging? What kind of teammates do, do I really like to work with? Um, you know, do I like to sit behind a desk all day long and that's what keeps me motivated going over, you know, data and information? Or do I need to be up and around on my feet outside doing things? So what kind of environment allows you to be the most productive? And so if you can really focus on those four things, and they're not things that you can just sit down and maybe, you know, in 10 minutes write out, but really do some, some, some soul searching, so to speak, and, and, and being honest with yourself about how you would write these, these four statements. Because you'll see as we move on um, through the presentation, these can be very beneficial to you in a lot of different ways if you're really understanding these things about yourself. <clears throat> And then what we're going to talk about primarily today is what am I good at? So what are those skills that I'm good at? Um, and so that's kind of the fifth part of, you know, really understanding yourself when you're talking about being intentional with your career. <clears throat> so one thing that I think is important is we talk about RISIC categories or Holland Code. So I'm, I'm certified in what's called the Myers-Briggs Strong Interest Inventory and also the Myers-Briggs MBTI um, Personality Assessment. And so what those do is they're online assessments that you can take that I can walk you through if you're interested, that helps you really understand how your personal interests um, fall into these six main categories, which are what we call Holland Codes. 
Um, and so each one is, is different in itself, but there's a lot of similarities and differences as you're going through those. And so there's a couple other webinars out there that we go into more depth uh, regarding these Holland codes and how you go about understanding what they are. But they're very important to understand as well um, as you're starting to look at your transferable skills and really being intentional about your career. So a high level overview of these six codes um, is, you know, the realistic category we call the doers. So they're the people that like to really get out there um, and be physical and do the work. Um, the investigative, which are the thinkers. So they like to do anything that they can be very um, data driven and they like to investigate things. The bigger the problem, um, the, the more engaging it is to them. And they really like to to use um, that investigative ability um, to figure things out. We have the artistic category, which are the creators. Um, anything they can do to express their creativity, to express their individuality, um, to be out there and expressive um, in various different ways is are, have, you know, people in these categories have interest in, in those things. The social or the helpers. So these are the things that, um, you know, anything they can do to help other people um, anything that falls into that category um, helps describe um, people in this category with, with that have these interests. And then enterprising and conventional. So enterprising um, being the persuaders and conventional being the organizers. So enterprising is, is very um, that category of the people that they love to be in those leadership type positions where they have the ability to persuade and influence others to reach maybe a common goal. Um, where the organizers are very conventional, or the conventional category, um, they're very organized in the way they approach problems, the way they do things. They like to be in very systematic, process-driven kind of environments. Um, and so you can kind of see as you're going through those, those are very brief description of those, but there's various interest levels um, that fall into those categories. And there's also skills that we will talk about um, that fall into those categories. <clears throat> And then you can see, I've talked about some of them, kind of the career motivator for those individuals that maybe fall into those categories um, of what they're doing. <clears throat> and so we find as we're going through the Myers-Briggs um, thing, which we're not gonna do today, obviously, uh, but most people are a combination of two or three of these themes. And so you might find somebody, for instance, that, you know, hey, I find that a lot of my interests fall into the realistic and investigative categories. So I like to physically be out there doing that work, but I also really like to, to do the, the analyzing part of it. So you can start to think as you're understanding those categories, what are some of the jobs that maybe fall into those categories um, that, that you could then pursue because you may have a lot of interest in those categories to do. So as you're going through kind of the Myers-Briggs process, um, you can see those categories that we have, the six, and there's basic interests that fall underneath those categories. So for instance, an investigative, remember that's the analyzing piece. There may be some basic interests of people that, that fall into the area of science, research, the medical science, mathematics. And so you can kind of start with this bigger overall, you know, um, category of investigative, the analyzing career motivator, and then break that down into there's, there's four even more of some of these basic interests that fall into there. And so you can start to then, you know, narrow your job search down, so to speak, based on, you know, I have a lot of interest in these categories. And so what are some maybe fields or careers that I could look into getting into that will allow me to use those interests in, in various different ways? <clears throat> and so these are just some of the examples that fall under each category. Um, and as we would go through the strong interest inventory um, you know, process, we would help you um, narrow those things down um, because we would then get into, okay, what are some of the values that, that are similar in these areas that align with you? And then what are some of those, those careers or jobs that you may be able to, to look into and pursue that would allow you to have some of those same interests and values in place? <clears throat> so that's a very brief overview, like I said, there's a webinar out there that's called Intentionally Designing Your Career that goes into a little bit more depth. Um, but I think as we start to talk about skills, um, it's very important to, to kind of have that context um, as we go into the next part of our discussion. <clears throat> so let's go into start identifying your skills, which is the basis of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so what are transferable skills? 
Um, there's a lot of different definitions out there, but you know, I like to identify them as skills that you can use in every job, no matter what the title or the field. So these are skills that uh, employers typically seek out these transferable skills because they know you will most likely have the tools to help you go beyond the typical job description that is out there. Um, and these transferable skills are yours to keep and are what makes you unique as an individual. So even though you may have some of the same transferable skills as somebody else, everybody has different levels of experience using those skills and different things that have made them who they are as an individual and how they've used those skills. And, and I think that that's the second piece that we'll talk about in here is once you've identified these skills, being able to put that context around um, how you've used those skills is very important as you're going into that job interview or is that as you're looking for that career change or maybe that next step um, in your career. And we'll talk about that here shortly. <clears throat> so why is it important to identify the transferable skills you possess as a candidate for a job as you, or as you look for that next job is, like I said, it sets you apart from others. Um, it may help you identify potential jobs aligned with those skills. So instead of maybe as you're looking for that job and just looking through the one ads or looking through Monster or LinkedIn or Indeed or whatever, and you're just looking for jobs, you could be a little bit more intentional about, hey, here's some of the skills I know I possess. What jobs may be out there that allow me to use those skills? Because as I go into that job interview or I put that resume together, um, I'm going to see that there's a lot of things that I can easily talk to um, in that interview and put in that, that cover letter and resume to allow me to, to align those with the job. <clears throat> it could help you identify potential next steps in your career based on the skills and interests. And it allows you to continue to understand and identify you regarding your career and overall goals. So again, it's just another way as we go back to those four career Ws and talk about that fifth one, the skills. It's another way that you can help identify yourself and understand yourself regarding what you're capable of, what you're good at, what you're successful with, and how you can transition that into um, a career um, going forward. So some common transferable skills, um, you know, there's obviously a lot more than these, um, but here's some of the most common ones that, that people think of when you talk about transferable skills. So, you know, obviously computer skills, your problem solving, critical thinking, leading a project, writing, project management, communication, execution of tasks, relationship building, leading others, adaptability. <clears throat> and so the list can go on and on and on. And so what I usually do when I'm encouraging people to come up with their transferable skills is make a traditional list and rank them. And so you can do this by just asking of what am I good at doing and writing those things down? What do you do on a regular basis at your current job that you feel you're very effective at doing? Why do you feel that you're good at these things? And what are some tangible results which are, are very important to, to identify as you're going through this? Because as you're looking for that first job or making that transition or getting that, that um, promotion, <clears throat> you wanna be able to not only talk about what you're good at and what your skills are, but also give real life examples as to how you're able to use these skills in, in your personal or, or professional life. And also, you know, why you feel like you were good at doing these things with some metrics or some impacts that you made. So that's one way of identifying transferable skills. Um, very easy. Anybody can do that. It just takes a little bit of time and effort and really thinking back about, you know, what are those things and making that list. <clears throat> Another way um, that we're gonna spend a little bit of time on today is using what we call the success story method to help you identify your skills. Um, I have a colleague and strategic partner and, and a really good friend over in Indianapolis who is the president and owner of Wayfinders Consulting. And we go through a life mapping process um, with our clients. Um, and this is one of the methods we use to help identify potential occupations and careers. Um, and it's a, it's a very easy process and one that I think um, uh, as you dive into it will help you get some more results as opposed to just trying to sit there and think about things you're good at and rank them. <clears throat> so again, these success stories can help you identify your skills and then aligning your skills and interests provides an intentional career path, which we'll talk about how to do that here in just a moment. 
So the success story process is, is very simple. Um, and we won't go through it all today just because um, it's difficult to talk to everybody on the webinar about their success stories. But write down examples of 10 success stories that include things that you were passionate about and excelled at. So basically things you like and were really good at. Um, and so there's a number of different ways you can do this, but I always encourage people to start back as far back as you can remember, um, even before you had that first job. So maybe it's in grade school, middle school, whatever, um, maybe even earlier, and start writing down one or two sentences about these 10 success stories that you have. You don't have to write a whole book. We don't have to write a whole chapter. We're not putting this together as a book or anything like that, but you're just jotting down 10 things that you felt like you're really good at and passionate about. <clears throat> the stories must be both. Um, however, it does not mean that you're an expert and perfect, but had some positive ability towards it. So, um, you know, you don't have to be, hey, I'm the absolute best there ever was at this thing, but it's important that you, you are able to talk about how you were passionate about something and excelled at it, and you were both like um, things you were like and you're very good at. <clears throat> These stories can include things like volunteering, maybe athletics, school projects, jobs, projects around the home, starting something new, something you've created, a personal goal, et cetera. Um, and you only need to write a sentence or two about describing the success you had and how it illustrated what you were passionate about and excelled at. So again, this is a way of identifying these skills that we're gonna talk about here in just a minute. But it's also a way to help you start to look internally, like we've talked about, to really help you also answer maybe some of those four questions about the who, what, why, and what environments you like to work in. <clears throat> so after you have that down, um, after you have your success stories written out, you're going to begin to identify common skills that you use to achieve that success. And so you're gonna have your, your 10 success stories and you're gonna think back about what are some skills that I had um, that, that allowed me to be successful in those things. So maybe, you know, you have, you know, three or four of your success stories, uh, you, you led a team. And so leadership ability is in there. Maybe there was a success story where you felt like, man, I just knocked it out of the park in terms of how I communicated with other people. Or perhaps it was, you know, something from, from your, your childhood where, um, hey, I was on an athletic team and it really taught me how to be successful because we all worked together and won that, that title or won that tournament or just won a game because we were really struggling and we had to work together and pull together. And so really think um, critically about your success stories and try to identify some of those common skills that you use to achieve that su success. And those identified skills can be used in a variety of ways. You begin your career, continue career, or start to make a change in your career. And so to illustrate this, um, you can take your top 10 success stories, and I'd encourage you to try to break it down into maybe three, your top three. You could do four or five, but you know, ideally you're identifying your top three. And you're writing down your identified skills. So you'll have a piece of paper and you'll have your success stories across the top. And down the left-hand side of that paper, or all your identified skills that you, you've maybe you know, used or think you've used, um, you can talk about across those 10 success stories. And then I have to ask you to, to chart it out. <clears throat> you know, so, hey, you know, success story one, two, and three, I really showed my leadership skills in that. Success story two, you know, hey, it was, it was all about the teamwork. Not so much maybe in success story one or three, but you know, in two, it was all about the teamwork. Um, you can see their communication, creativity, execution. These are just examples that I came up with. Um, and so you're going to chart out your identified skills and you're going to across all three of your success stories. And then you're going to go and total them up, <clears throat> um, both on the right hand side and at the bottom. And so what this is going to do, it's going to help you not only identify those skills, but it's also going to help you rank some of those skills in terms of how much um, you use those skills and we're successful at doing um, those things. And so you can easily see here by taking a little bit of time that, you know, hey, maybe leadership and communication here and here are two of my top transferable skills. And you know what? I have some success stories that I can talk about for my life or my career um, that supports why I think those, those are really important transferable skills. <clears throat> 
And so what you do as you prioritize um, and, and do this is your, your development level um, is you would rank it highest to lowest. So for instance, you know, leadership, teamwork, and communication are maybe my top three. I feel very comfortable in talking about those things where some of these others, as I go down the list, um, maybe not so much that I feel really good about those things, but I may need some more help with that. And then I ask you to kind of write out what, what made you successful in those categories. So for instance, in leadership, you know, I led a team of 15 individuals towards a common goal. So you're starting with your success stories, you've identified common skills, you've now prioritized and ranked them. Now we're gonna get some specifics um, in terms of how you do that or how you did that or what, what you mean by those things and give you those specifics because that's gonna help you with a lot of things. Say you're heading into that interview um, with, with uh, somebody about a new position that you wanna get. You're able to now talk about when they say that question, hey, what is it that you're gonna to bring to the table or what is it that you're gonna to bring to this team or what is it that sets you apart from somebody? You could very easily say, you know, my leadership, teamwork and communication is is something I'm extremely comfortable with. And let me tell you why I'm extremely comfortable with that. Leadership, hey, I have this example where I led a team of 15 individuals to towards a common goal. This is how the team was made up. This is the goal we achieved. This is how we did it. Um, teamwork, collaborate with three different departments during a project. You know, I was in charge of, of this, this project and I had to coordinate teamwork and communication with all these different departments. And here's how I did that. So what you're trying to do here is you're starting to put some, some, some words and some context around these skills, <clears throat> okay? And so you're gonna do that with all of your skills um, for, the, for as much as you possibly can. And this process identifies important information to use, like we said, in a variety of different ways. So once you have those, those categories or those, um, those those different things of why you were successful written down, you want to make sure that you're being as specific as possible. You're documenting maybe metrics that, that you used or that were used to um, help you understand that you were successful. You're gonna develop your narrative around, narrative around each one and you're gonna try to align your skills with the job description, okay? So for instance, if we go back a slide here, <clears throat> As you're starting to look for that first job, you're, you're obviously, you have the job posting on say Indeed that you're looking at, and it's gonna have a job description there of things that you're going to be required to do in that. So you're gonna be able to go through and you now have some key words that you're looking for in those job descriptions. And so you're saying, hey, you know, it talks about leadership. It talks about being able to, to work as a team. It talks about creativity. It talks about, being adaptable or executing on specific things. Maybe my technology skills are listed in there. And so the more you can, <clears throat> you know, identify those transferable skills and try to align those with a job description or talk about those things in your cover letter, making sure they're outlined on your resume um, are all gonna be very important steps for you to take and things that you're going to be doing as you're intentionally you know, taking that next step in your career, whatever it may be as part of that career. <clears throat> so how can you use these things? We'll get into some specifics here um, as we're going through that. <clears throat> so if you go back and, and say you're, you're, I don't know where everybody is on this, uh, this webinar in terms of your career journey, um, but say you're looking for that first job and you've gone through the process whether you've gone through the Myers-Briggs um, strong interest inventory, or you've just really sat down and tried to identify yourself, you know, what categories do my interests fall into? And I know that, hey, I'm realistic and investigative, that those are a lot of interests that fall into those categories because I like to work with my hands and be out there doing the, the, the work, but also like to be very analytical and being able to investigate things. And so what are some jobs maybe that, that I could, you know, find in those things? So if you're using kind of your interests and you have a really good idea of what your career W's are, so who you are, what you value, what do you like to do, which environments allow you to be the most productive, and you're also able to use your identified transferable skills, this is where it's going to become 
where we say you can intentionally um, do your career discovery and planning because you now have three different data points that will allow you to investigate jobs um, or opportunities or, or things that are out there in terms of a career. <clears throat> and so one way of do that, uh, to do that, to identify some potential jobs, and this is for those of you that may be <clears throat> looking for that first job, you can start with, I would describe myself as, so who are you? <clears throat> Um, using your personal Holland codes. So what jobs might allow me to be who I am out there? And so if I say that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm hardworking and, and I have a lot of integrity as one of my values, which we'll get to here in just a second, but I would describe myself as a very hardworking individual um, that, that um, is a team player. What jobs are gonna allow me to, to be who I am? I'm gonna be out there looking for jobs um, that allow me, knowing my personal interests and Holland codes and being very realistic, is maybe it's a job that allows me to, you know, be very physical um, in terms of I'm up and around, moving throughout the office. I'm not just sitting there behind a desk all day long. <clears throat> um, it's also going to allow me to be, um, you know, somebody that that is part of a team. So perhaps, you know, I don't want to be looking for those jobs where I'm going to be stuck behind a desk all day long. Um, I want to be up and around. So perhaps it's it's maybe, you know, hey, I'm going to start looking at jobs that, um, you know, are in a, a factory type setting because I'm up and around moving and doing my, you know, um, my realistic interests are being able to be used. But also I can be very investigative because maybe I have to try to figure out um, a process or something within that factory. So that's one way you can start to identify what jobs might allow you to be who you are. <clears throat> The next thing is, you know, if you know what you really value, what jobs might have the same shared values as you? And so I know, you know, in my career, I've spent, um, you know, almost 20 years in, in kind of corporate America working for FedEx and Xerox and a big printing company out in New York City um, and, and had just some, some great jobs that were very engaging and um, met a lot of great people, led a lot of great teams across the country. But did any of those jobs have the same shared value as me? You know, did I ever feel like I woke up every day and I was making a huge impact towards something other than maybe the bottom line or driving in that revenue? Um, because I, I knew that I really, what I really enjoyed about my job was not the job I was doing, but the fact that I got to work with so many great people and lead so many people. And I could use those shared values that I have about building them up and helping them achieve um, their goals was something that I really valued in a job. <clears throat> and so I started to look at, you know, when I decided to make a, a career change and jump out of, you know, kind of corporate America with FedEx is what jobs may have the same shared values. And so I started to look into, you know, the nonprofit world. And I went to work for a nonprofit uh, here in Champaign, Illinois, um, where um, we were all about certifying people on how to take care of trees properly. And so it was all about the environment and, you know, helping people achieve their career goals as an arborist. Um, and so I had, I saw that value. And as I went and became the director of credentialing with them, I was in charge of these certification programs um, that I could not only work with my internal team, um, but I also knew that the work that we did every day was impacting people's lives around the world because it was helping them achieve um, their career goals as an arborist. <clears throat> and so I was able to find that job. I was using a lot of my transferable skills from my corporate America job with FedEx and Xerox, but I brought that to the nonprofit area where I could really see that day-to-day -day impact I was making on the, the lives of my team that worked with me, um, but also those people around the world that, that were interested in our nonprofit. <clears throat> So, you know, sit down and start talking about what are some jobs or some companies um, that I might be able to use some of my values um, in doing. What jobs might provide me the opportunity to do what I love doing? <clears throat> you know, and so I, I look back about my, my career and, you know, I love to travel um, with all my jobs, but I didn't always get to do that, um, you know, with every position that I had. And so, you know, as I started to look at the opportunity with the nonprofit here in Champaign, you know, there was the opportunity to do a lot of traveling, um, but I also could be, um, you know, making that impact with people as I was traveling around and telling them about our programs and our organization and so forth. Um, and so, you know, 
really sit down and try to understand what is it about your current job that you love doing? What is it that you don't like doing? <clears throat> um, and how can I change that? And what kind of jobs may be out there that allow me to not only use my skills, um, but allow me to do things I really like to do while also living up to the values that I have and who I am as a, as a person. <clears throat> and then I would love to work in what jobs might provide me, provide the best environment for me. Um, and so this is really going back and looking internally, like I said, and, you know, not only what your values are, your skills, what you like doing, um, but what environment am I going to be most engaging in? You know, if you have a, that, that first job and, and you know that, hey, I want to be up and about, I've always enjoyed in college or high school being parts of teams um, and being engaged in the overall, you know, impact of what's going on. I know I need to be looking for jobs that will allow me to do that and be in that collaborative environment, so to speak. Or, you know what, I really like to be that person where I'm just working by myself and have a project and I can just do everything I can to be successful at that project. And so I don't mind being part of a team, but I'd rather be more individualized as I'm approaching my job and then, you know, interact with the team <clears throat> um, as necessary and as required with my job. So looking for jobs that might provide you the best environment to, to support what you like to do, uh, what we're gonna be most engaged at. And then your skills, what am I good at? What jobs would allow me to use my skills, right? And so I'm just looking at, you know, hey, I've got great computer skills. Um, I'm good at, at leading teams. Um, and so how can I go out and find um, some jobs that would allow me to use those skills? Um, and, and then how do I go about, you know, finding those jobs and, and securing those jobs? So that's one way if you're starting to look for that very first job. But what if you're, you're somebody that's wanting to make a career change? How can you use those same three data points that we talked about to make that career change? And so you might, you might recognize that they're in a little bit different order here. So if you're making that career change um, and you want to do something completely different, you probably want to start with your skills first because you don't want to lose track of all the things that you've done and your experiences up to that point and all the um, you know expertise maybe you have um, and those skills. So you may start with your skills and then see where those fit into your four career W's and then looking at your interest level to do your intentional career planning. And so what this looks like um, is a little bit differently. So you go back and look at those four career W's, but instead of say, I would describe myself as, you're gonna now ask yourself, you're gonna be able to describe yourself, but you're gonna say, how have I grown professionally and personally since I started this career to this point in time, right? And you're gonna be able to describe about those things. You want to identify those things that you've helped, you have, you've grown professionally and personally on. Because what that's gonna do is it's going to help you then look at these are some things that I really want to make sure that I keep track of as I'm trying to make that career change and maybe do something completely different than I'm doing now because I don't want to lose track of all the effort and time that I put into to professionally and personally grow as an individual. Your values, have my professional and personal values remain the same or have they changed? So these are also questions that you can use if you're deciding, hey, is it time I need to make a change um, or am I just maybe need to re-engage with what I'm doing um, currently? And so if you're having that conversation, you, you understand, you know, what your values are. What do you value in a job? So as you're starting to make that change, you're now asking yourself, have my professional and personal values remain the same or have they changed? If they've remained the same, then maybe there's opportunities there within your organization or within your current position that you could then look at. If maybe they've changed, well, maybe it's time that I need to strategically look at, you know, what else is out there so I can make sure that I'm still aligned, um, aligning my values with those, those jobs or those careers that might be out there. What about my job do I still enjoy and what would I change? And so as you're starting to make that career change or deciding to make that career change, this is always a very important question. What do I still enjoy doing? If I sit here going, there's nothing about my job I still enjoy, probably a good idea to make that career change or at least to have some conversations with your supervisor perhaps about, hey, here's some things that I'm struggling with. Uh, is there more opportunity for me within my, my company or my organization? Um, so what about my job do I still enjoy and what would I change? So maybe there's some things out there that um, you do still enjoy doing 
but how can I enhance those or how can I do more of those things within my current organization or making that change going to the other organization? <clears throat> and then does my current environment still support me in being productive? Um, and so as you're going through these mental questions, if you're trying to decide to make that career change, this is a very important one as well, because you may be hitting on, you know, it's a lot, I understand where I've grown professionally and personally, my values have stayed the same. Um, I still enjoy for the most part what I'm doing, but you know what, the environment I'm working in is just not allowing me to be productive. And so, hey, I may need to look at making a change or having some of those tough conversations to do that. Um, and being very intentional about what those things are, uh, what those things are, because if you're not working in that productive environment, that's going to take away from not only your happiness, but your productivity as well, um, because you're always going to be worried about, you know, all the things that may be going on. <clears throat> and then the last one is what newly developed skills do I have and can I use those skills in a new position? So I always encourage my clients and people that I work with, especially as you get that first job, you know, always keep that resume updated. Um, not that you're going to leave tomorrow and go find that job, but what that is, is you're going to be achieving a lot of things throughout your career. And a lot of those things you're going to remember, but there's going to be some of those things that you kind of forget. And so whether you keep that resume fully updated so you can hand it to somebody tomorrow, you're at least keeping note of all the accomplishments that you're making and all the skills that you're, you're, you're gaining and all the things that you're doing because when you decide to make that change, you have it ready to go and you can easily do that. <clears throat> and so I always encourage my clients to, to really keep track of those things and, and what you're doing um, as you're achieving those. <clears throat> and then once you have that list and you keep that list going, if you decide to make that change, you can then look at, okay, what are some jobs that allow me to do those things? And then obviously your personal interest in the Holland Codes play into it where you're gonna be looking at what are some things I'm still interested in doing and pursuing as a career. So once you have those things kind of identified, whether you're trying to find that, that, that um, first job or making that career change, you're, you're gonna be going through and, and creating what we call a personal development action plan. So you're using your four career Ws, you're using your identified skills, um, you're using your, your Holland codes or interests and you're creating um, your career development action plan. <clears throat> and so for those of you that have never created an action plan, so we'll, we'll talk about what some of the things are that you include in that action plan. But I like to use what's called SMART goals, which you've probably heard of. But you're making sure these goals are specific, measurable, actual, relevant, and time bound. Um, and so you know, when you're making that decision to find that next job or that first job or make that career goal and you've gone through all of the or that career change and you've gone through all of these steps um, to to identify, OK, I am going to make that career change. Um, how am I going to do that and what are the steps I need to do? So you want to come up with an action plan that says, what, do you, what is it you want to accomplish? Do you want to learn, discover or apply? Um, who needs to be included? When do you want to do this? Why is this a goal of yours? So as you're coming up with these, these goals, you want to be as specific as you possibly can. So for instance, <clears throat> you might say, hey, I want to be, um, you know, the supervisor of first shift. Um, and, and that's a goal of mine because I know that that's, where I need to be that's gonna allow me to be an environment that I'm, I'm productive in. Uh, it's gonna be who I am. I'm gonna be very, you know, use my values and so forth. So, hey, I wanna to go to a new shift within my organization, or you know what? I need to go and I want to be um, the director of credentialing at a nonprofit in Champaign, Illinois, um, like I did, you know? So you're able to be very specific about what it is you want to do. Why is that your goal? And, and when do you want to do this, which leads to the measurable part. <clears throat> how are you going to quantify the results as best you can? How can you measure your progress? How do you know when you have met your goal? So if you write a very specific goal of how hey, would it be the director of credentialing at that, that International Society of Arbor Culture, um, I know I'm going to meet that goal, obviously, when I get that job. But how am I going to measure my progress towards that? So say, for instance, I work within that organization already, and I know that I want to be promoted to that within the next, you know, six months to a year. Okay, well, how am I going to how am I going to do that? And so 
I need to be able to say, here's the steps I'm going to take. Here's the conversations I'm going to have with my supervisor. Here's, you know, the things I'm going to go through to measure that I can, you know, go through those things step by step. You're going to start each goal with an action verb, begin, complete, start, stop, quit, et cetera. And so you're going to be talking about, I'm going to <clears throat> start taking um, a class at Parkland College about leadership to help develop my leadership uh, skills, because I've identified through this process that that's one of my transferable skills, but maybe it's a little bit lower on the list and I need to develop those things. <clears throat> You're gonna talk about, is it relevant? Why am I setting this goal now? Is it aligned with my overall career goals? Is it aligned with my four career Ws? So you have a very specific goal you're gonna do. Here's how you're measuring it. Here's how I'm gonna do those things. And you know what? I'm gonna do that gut check, I call it. And I'm gonna make sure that it's aligned with all these things that are very important to me um, in terms of my four career Ws and my overall career goals. <clears throat> And it's time bound. So why, what is the time frame for this goal? Is that realistic? When's the begin date, the target end date, the actual completion date and so forth. Um, and so, you know, there was a point in time in my career where I was like, I wanna be the CEO of some company. Well, is that realistic? Probably. Was it gonna happen tomorrow? No. <laughs> so that goal, I had to be very realistic about what I wanted to do and when I wanted to achieve it and how I was going to get there. Right. There's no there's no bad goals, but you want to set realistic expectations for yourself in terms of the timeline. And by going through these things, um, you know, identifying the specific steps and so forth, um, it, it's going to help you, you know, achieve those goals and so forth. <clears throat> so the other thing to do um, that you can use for your your skills, um, your transferable skills and some of the things we've talked about is to develop your personal impact statements. And so <clears throat> these are important for a lot of different things. Um, your skills and your four career Ws and all the things we've talked about today um, can help you in resume development, um, interview questions, potential job identification like we talked about. And so being able to use your skills, being very specific about those skills and how you were successful in those things will help you in making sure that those skills are on your, your resume will help you to also put information around your cover letter that outline and highlight some of those specific skills that you're good, you're good with, at doing. And also as you're going through that process of aligning those skills with that job description, you can then write your resume and write your cover letters and so forth tailored to that job description using your skills that are aligned um, with things that are outlined in there. It's also going to help you with interview questions. So as you're getting into that interview and you get that first interview, you're going to be able to talk, as we mentioned before, about these skills very specifically about how you how you use them, how you, you know, why you were successful in using them and so forth. And then also potential job identification that we talked about by using those. OK, let me go find some jobs or organizations that allow me to to be part of a team or execute on things, use critical thinking and so forth. So using both the identified skills and your career Ws will help you come up with what I call your personal impact statements for your resume, interviews, potential jobs. And so, sorry, that's not all in there, but you know, one example of a personal impact statement is the result-oriented professional with over 25 years of progressive leadership experience, a visionary leader with the ability to motivate and develop talent, resulting in an excellent organizational experience built on cornerstones of communication, execution, and trust. Consistently exceeds corporate goals, objectives resulting in numerous awards and recognition. So that may be how you could identify your personal impact statement, because that's going to say, you know, you have things in there like leadership, which comes with your transferable skills. You have communication, you have execution, you know, trust comes up in there, which isn't an identified skill, but through good leadership and communication and execution, you can build trust with people. <clears throat> Um, and so you can kind of see that as an example of how you can maybe use these things to, you know, start off your resume or put that personal impact statement at the top of your resume or to be talking about why those things are important to you as you're getting into the, the resume building, cover letter, and certainly the interview. <clears throat> so um, let's see. The other thing for interview questions, um, like we kind of mentioned on here a little bit, is it'll help you identify scenarios you can review during your interview. So, you know, going back to your success stories, 
It can help you develop questions for the interviewer, and it can help you ensure that four career Ws are met or identified to, to calibrate that it is the right fit for you. And I always talk to my clients, especially as I'm preparing them for that interview, um, is an interview is just as much that person ensuring that you're a right fit for that position and that organization and that team as it is you making sure that that organization is a good fit for you. Um, and so, you know, being able to develop questions for the interviewer for, so at the end of that interview where it says, do you have any questions for me? You're then going through and talking about, you know, anything that came up in the interview that you want further clarification on, but also you're touching on, you know, are the, are the values that are important to me you know, how do you, how are those intertwined within this job? And, you know, is the environment a good fit for me? <clears throat> is it going to allow me to use some of my skills? So it's going to help you develop some of those questions for the interviewer to make sure that it's a good fit for you, just like they're doing for you. <clears throat> um, and then potential job identification, we talked a little bit about, is the job aligned with your personal interests? Are the career, four career Ws evident in that job? How are your skills going to be utilized? Are your skills included in the job description? What transferable skills do you already you know, possess? And so those are some ways that you can use the four career Ws, your identified skills, maybe your interests to help you with your cover letters, your job descriptions or your job search, um, your interview questions and even questions that you're, you're developing um, for that person as you're in that interview. <clears throat> So some additional resources as we, looks like we have a few more minutes left, some additional resources that you can use and um, Jordan can, can send this out to the attendees today. Um, it's a career awareness worksheet that I, I created, which will help you as you're identifying your four career Ws, your skills and your action plan. It, it's a place where you can have a one page deal where it says, you know, I would describe myself as you're actually writing those things down. As you go through and identify your top five skills, you're documenting those top five skills. And even more if you have it, you could have a couple pages if you need to. Um, and then if you're looking for that new, that first job or you're making that career change, what are some occupations I could pursue that allow me to use those skills and to also utilize, make sure that those four career Ws are in place to ensure that I have, um, you know, an engaging um, and an intentionally designed career as my next step <clears throat> that I'm doing. And then you're gonna come up with your next steps or your SMART goals, um, like we talked about. And you know the biggest issue, not issue, but biggest hurdle that I, I, I work with my clients on is holding themselves accountable to the process and your journey. You know, Finding that first job, finding that next step in your career, identifying that next step, taking that next step in your career, making a career change, those are all full-time jobs in themselves if you do it the proper way and are very intentional about it. So you have to hold yourself accountable to the, to the steps and the goals that you have. And I think that as you're going through this whole process of the four career Ws, your interest levels, your transferable skills, you're gonna find a lot about, out about yourself that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And maybe you haven't thought of, you know, hey, I've just had this job and I feel like I'm happy, but maybe I'm really not. You know, maybe there's more out there that I could be, you know, doing to impact the lives of others, or there's more out there that I could do to impact an organization at a higher level, um, or there's more things I can do out there that are just going to keep me happy going to work every day, <laughs> you know? And so really identifying those things and taking that time to do that, that searching is, is going to be very beneficial to you. So Jordan can email this out to you um, after the call. Um, and you can use it if you would like to. Um, another resource that you can use is called the, the ONET online. Um, this is, um, <clears throat> it's, it's created and managed by the uh, US Department of Labor. Um, it's the nation's primary source of occupational information is what they call, and you can go access this right now at the, at the URL that's at the top of the page. Um, but it contains hundreds of standardized and occupational specific descriptors on almost a thousand occupations covering the entire US economy. And what's interesting about this is you can go in on the homepage and up here where it says advanced search, whoops, sorry, when it, where it says advanced search, you can actually um, go in and search by your Holland codes. 
if you know what those are and feel comfortable with that. You could search by some of the transferable skills. So you could say, you know, teamwork um, or communication or computer skills or whatever, and it will come up with jobs that, that have those skills involved with them, as well as maybe have those same Holland codes um, listed there. So it'll list all of the jobs that maybe fall into like the realistic category or the investigative or the uh, enterprising and so forth. So it's a really good tool that you can use right now if you want to, um, to go in and do some job searching. And it even gives you some, um, some salary information in some cases. It talks about you know, what a typical work day looks like, maybe some of the tools and technology you might use, some education um, and so forth. It even talks a little bit about environments that you might work in. So a really good tool um, if you're interested to help you with that job search, especially if you've gone through maybe all these other steps that we're talking about, because you could really do some, some really cool uh, searching with that, um, with that tool if you're interested. Um, and then the last part is, you know, for sitting through this, this webinar today, um, I'd be more than happy to, um, you know, have a free 30 minute career coaching call with you just to kind of learn your story. Um, to see if you have any additional questions on maybe what I covered today, to see if there's any other resources I can point you to. Um, and Jordan can also send this link out to my calendar um, and, and you can feel free to schedule that free 30 minute career coaching call. And I love just to meet you um, and to hear your story and to see if there's anything else I can help you with in terms of your career journey um, and maybe taking that next step to find that first job or to make that career change or whatever it may be in terms of that career journey. So I'd be happy to do that. And I encourage y'all to do that uh, if you would like to um, after the webinar. <clears throat> and then finally, any questions? Um, I guess we could open it up. There's a few people on the call if there are any questions. And if not, there's my contact information. You can feel free to, to reach out to me if you have any other questions after the call. Um, and also visit my website there. You could submit questions through there if you're interested as well. With that, I want to say thank you, and I'll turn it open for questions, so if there are any. <clears throat> well, while we await any questions, uh, thank you, Kevin, for the great presentation. Um, and if you have any questions for Kevin, please type them into or enter them into the chat, or you could raise your hand and we could um, unmute you and you could speak and ask your questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if you didn't catch Kevin's contact information, here is my contact information. Um, I'll, of course, be sh uh, sharing that calendar link out and that resource that Kevin discussed. Um, and if you want to contact me, I can connect you with Kevin as well. There are multiple ways to do it. Um, make sure there's nothing in the chat. <clears throat> So our next career webinar will be next Tuesday um, at 10 o'clock. It'll be resume and uh, cover letter basics, which I will actually be presenting. So uh, please sign up to receive, re receive your Zoom link this morning. I think I need more coffee this morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, join us next week. And then here are the remaining workshops for October, but we have a lot more workshops coming up and not just uh, for our career series, but for our business series, our technology series, crafty adults, writers workshops, uh, events like that. So again, visit champagne.org slash events for more information. And if you didn't catch Kevin's uh, information or my information, here is um, the general librarian email or you can email um, that account and it will get to me. Um, yeah, and Kevin, you're getting a thank you in the chat. Yes, thanks again, oh, Kevin, for your time. My pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. It's always uh, fun to do these and I hope you found the, the information uh, beneficial. So thank you for attending. <clears throat> All right, well, I don't see any questions at the moment. So I think we can go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you all for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.